Okay, I believe we can get started. And hopefully you all can see my uh, PowerPoint slides as well, right? The CETUS home slide um, says CETUS responsibilities. Perfect, thank you so much. Okay, great. Okay, so good morning to everyone and welcome to the fiscal agent and CPIT administrator training. I am Dewana Ross McQuarrie. So today we will go over CETUS responsibilities and submission uh, dates. Some information may be a refresher for some of you and new information to others. Um, I would like to kind of make sure that I'm covering information. Make sure my um, covering information that um, is useful. Are, do we have any new um, positions, seated, uh, I'm sorry, CPA administrators or fiscal agents uh, that are new to this role this year? Okay, great. Nice to meet you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, the reason I'm asking is, of course, not to put uh, you out, out on front. I just want to make sure that the information uh, that I provide today is going to be helpful. Um, of course, like I said, it's a refresher for some of us who have been doing it for a while. And for some of us who are new, uh, we just want to make sure that we cover what you need uh, to get you started. Um, so, um, we will uh, go over uh, the responsibilities for both the CPITs and the fiscal agents, okay? And um, I was informed that some of you may be acting as both, both the fiscal agent and the CPIT. So just want to make sure that you're aware that although you're acting as both, the CETA screens do not allow you to act as both. You actually have to put in your data entry separately. So we're gonna be demoing um, our CETA screens later on in the training, but um, just want to make that note that everything has to be done separately, okay? Okay, so today's training. <clears throat> we'll cover uh, division of duties, and that's the tasks and responsibilities for both CPIT admin, fiscal agent, and a little bit of building reporter. Um, we're gonna go over a timeline of events, uh, specifically the calendar of CETUS yearly uh, submission. The fiscal agent responsibilities, the CPIT administrator responsibilities, and then some reports that are available um, that you can uh, use to review your submission information. I just want to let you all know that these slides uh, are available on our knowledge base. Uh, they um, cover the information. So if you want to use that information to review, uh, this information is there as well as the training uh, is being recorded. So you can uh, utilize both of those resources um, at a later date if you need to. So we're gonna hop right in and uh, division of duties, uh, some of you may have seen this. Uh, this is uh, the basic uh, format for the duties um, for the particular roles, okay? So we see at the, at the top, uh, the CPIT admin, uh, the tasks and responsibilities. The CPIT admin assists fiscal agents with oversight of district reporting activities and collections. Those include the fall course review, expenditures, follow-up, and enrollment, okay? And specifically, if you're a CPIT admin, you have the duty of CPIT options, okay? Uh, that's where you select your programs to generate funds. Uh, we do have some new CPIT options information uh, that will I'll show you where that information is um, in just a bit when we go to our demo screens, but that's the overall uh, CPIT admin um, tasks and responsibilities. Now, of course, um, in that, uh, you have all of the responsibilities of keeping up when it says assist. Uh, so there's a lot of information that you might 
go back and forth uh, between your fiscals and your building or your fiscals will get your building reporters. But um, this is just a general overview of some of the collections that you would have to um, give information for, okay? So for our fiscal agents, um, oversight of building reporting activities. Um, again, those uh, reports are the fall course review, expenditures, follow-up enrollment, and then your specific tasks as the CPID administ administrators would have the CPID options, you would manage CDIS users. Okay, so your task specifically is to manage users. So you would give the, uh, the users uh, capabilities to um, access to all of the screens that they need to uh, perform uh, the duties. But we'll get more into manage CDIS users in later trainings, which is in the fall. Um, this specific training, we're trying to focus more on the enrollment because it's June and that's what's due. So uh, this is just to kind of give some of our um, new roles, uh, the people who are in new roles, uh, oversight of what everyone's responsibility is and how the system works basically. And then the last is our building reporters. Absolutely, uh, CPA options is due today. So <laughs> um, yeah, that's something to make note of. Um, so um, the building reporters position uh, is data entry and they have the same uh, course collections that uh, are due at the, the times as the fiscal agents and the CPID admins. So um, that's the duties of everyone in an overview uh, of way. Um, of course, there's a lot more that you may be responsible for, but just as an overview, that's what everyone is responsible for. And uh, talking about due dates, that will lead us right into our next slide, which is the timeline of events. Now, this specific timeline um, is for building reporters, fiscal agents, and CPIDs, okay? So this is just an overview of um, what happens through the year, okay? So again, uh, September, November, January, March, April, May, we're kind of past all of that, but future trainings will go in depth about September's responsibilities, November's, January's. Um, so we'll see you all again. Um, but just as an overview, um, around September, the fiscal agents are gonna start working on managed users information. They'll begin coordinating um, information and overseeing work-based learning, um, class and staff enrollment um, is information is around that time. So that's the month of September. November, you're gonna be looking at your expenditures reports. January, you're gonna be looking at your follow-up reports. Um, and then March and April, uh, CPITs, they're gonna be doing their CPIT options. Again, I'm going to um, give you more information pertaining to CPIT options in just a second. May is the student enrollment uh, data deadline. And then June, this is where we are now, which is our enrollment re uh, report submission, which is actually due today, uh, June 9th. Okay, so everyone's working all year round. This is an all year round process. Um, so that uh, this timeline is just kind of outlining to give you an idea of where you're headed. Okay, so our first um, topic uh, that we're going to, um, well, I'll say our first position is our uh, fiscal agents. Okay, so again, just like the overall timeline, um, you have uh, the same dates uh, that everyone else has. Um, specifically, um, I would say, again, we're gonna focus on June. Uh, the building reporters should perform a final review of enrollment data and submit the final information to the fiscal agent for approval in late June. So that's where we are right now. Um, I'm going to show you some information uh, today on how to um, verify your student advancement using reports available. 
And then also we're going to de demo the CETA screens to submit your enrollment data uh, to your CPID admin. So we're going to kind of walk through a little demo process, um, if you haven't done so already, um, how a fiscal agent would review the information provided by their building instructor, I'm sorry, building uh, reporter, and then um, submit it to the CPID. So we're going to go over that. But timeline is the same all of everyone's working on the same. Um, however, uh, I, I would say some of the information may be a little different as we get into our CPIT. They have a, a couple different um, tasks here. And again, these PowerPoint slides are up on the knowledge base, just in case you wanna look at this later. I would also like to say um, when we go into our demos in just a moment, you can uh, visit train.cetus.com and use your my login credentials if you want to follow along and uh, see how the process is done. Um, you should be able to do that in train.cetus.com using your my login credentials. Um, I haven't seen uh, the new due date for the call or I haven't gotten the information for fall course collection yet. Um, as soon as I get that information, I will look into that and uh, I will let them know um, that that was brought up in the training. But yeah, I have at this time, I do not have that information. Okay, so now we're going to move into our CPID administrator. And uh, this is, again, the same timeline of events. Um, but if you notice in April, so again, September is the fall, October, November, January, and then um, April conduct CPID options uh, selection process. So around April, you should be looking into your CPID options. Um, and then that information is due, uh, CPID options as it states, June. Uh, so uh, that's something that the fiscal agent isn't responsible for. At the, uh, so CPID options is something that the CPID administrator would have to look into. And again, I'm going to uh, give you the information, uh, the new information you should have received. Um, they sent an email uh, not too long ago with the new CPID options information because some of this uh, screens offer new features. Um, I'm going to go over that as well. So um, if you didn't get that email, it's completely okay. If you did, then you, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, uh, so CPID options is due uh, June 9th. So um, we're going to get into that in just a moment. But just to kind of give um, for further clarification, the general collection process so for all of the collection uh, times, the fall course, the expenditures, the follow-up, and the enrollment, um, the building reporter is going to collect the data, input the data, they complete it, and they turn it into the fiscal agent. Okay, so once the fiscal agent gets the information, fiscal agent reviews the information. Um, if they have any uh, discrepancies or um, concerns uh, before they submit it, they can return it back to the building reporter. Okay, so um, building reporter submits to fiscal agent, fiscal agent reviews the information. If there's anything that needs to be changed, they then return that back to the building reporter. Moving the system along a little bit uh, further, the fiscal agent would then, once the information is accurate, um, they would then send that information or submit that information to the CPIT admin. Okay. Um, the CPIT admin would then review the information uh, just as the fiscal agent would. And uh, if, if the information, uh, again, if there's discrepancies or if there is anything that needs to be corrected, they would then return it to the fiscal agent. Now, the process is the CPIT admin would never return it to the building reporter they would return it to the fiscal agent who would then 
if there are some discrepancies with data entry, they would then return that if needed to building reporter. So that's kind of why the arrows are kind of showing the chain. So um, just to give uh, some of our new users the understanding of how it works and they don't kind of jump the line of process there. So once our CPID admin uh, feel that, uh, or they reviewed the information, they've used all of the verification tools or reports, they would then review that, inf take that information and send it to OCTE. Um, and then again, process is still the same. If there's uh, something that needs to be returned, OCTE would then return it to the CPID admin, who would then return it to the fiscal agent, who would then return it to the building reporter. And so uh, hopefully that's clear, but that's the general collection process. And again, if some um, of our um, attendees today are doing both or maybe all of the positions, um, this is kind of how it would have to work in the screens as well. Okay, so um, when you uh, submit your information, you have to submit it as a CPID admin or a fiscal agent or a building reporter. So, and yes, thanks for the link to the due dates in the uh, chat there. So uh, that's all there if you um, would like to uh, utilize that as well. Okay, and as I was stating, uh, reviewing your information you would need to utilize the reports, uh, the report screens. Okay, so our CDIS reports, this is broken up by the use, basically, if you need to review courses, if you need to review students, or you need to re review enrollment. And this is um, just one of two slides, but um, specifically, again, we're into the enrollment, reviewing the enrollment information. So program enrollment history report would be something you would wanna look at. Um, so you will go to reports and then building reports uh, once you logged on to CDIS. And then you would find it under the program and then student reports. So this information has <clears throat> all of the uh, program information in it. You can take it and export it to uh, review it offline, but it will be really helpful to use uh, if you need to review your information before submission. And again, uh, later in the year, we'll get more into some of the other reports uh, regarding courses and students. Um, but uh, this is what you would use uh, for enrollment, which is due at this time. The second page uh, is uh, Again, reviewing enrollment, uh, there's the program's counts report uh, that's useful um, if you uh, want to uh, review program information uh, that is still available. Um, your class student list report is also useful um, for reviewing enrollment, so that information is also available as well. You can use that as a review. And then uh, to bring your attention to the student advancement report export, this was just put into production uh, today. So uh, many of us have been um, looking for uh, that and when that was going to be available. Um, so I was just informed that that was put into production today. However, um, if you're using the um, train site, it's not going to be something that you can use in there. It's not in the train site at this moment, but it is uh, available um, for you to um, use to review student advancement. It's an export. So you would um, go to reports and then build in reports. And again, I will demonstrate all this in just a second. But um, student advancement report export, you can export it to an Excel document and review your information offline. So just make note of that. So at this point, we've kind of broken down uh, the process of uh, what, who was responsible for providing what. Uh, we have all of our submission timelines uh, of when the information is due. Um, I would like to highlight the fact that uh, your enrollments are due today. Um, so uh, we're going to go into our demo 
Um, I'm going to change my screen over to show you where this information is on the knowledge base. And then we're going to demo um, fiscal agent um, screens and then uh, CPIT admin screens. And then we'll be um, almost into our closing. I'm sorry, CPIT options are due today. So we'll get into that screen in just a moment. Um, I do apologize for uh, saying that. Yes, that's absolutely right. CPIT options are due today. Your other information is due. Um, in June, and I'll get you to the calendar. Um, in just a moment, um, OCTE just released a new calendar that um, has been put in the chat. Um, so um, I'll sh the information that we have do have those new due dates on them. So I'll be showing you those due dates in just a moment. But yes, that was my my mistake. Yes, you're absolutely right. CP options are due today. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to change my screen over in just a moment. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, um, so this uh, tab that's open right now that you should see on your screen is our support.cetus site. Um, this is where our, well, this is what we refer to as our knowledge base. Um, the information that I was uh, specifically talking about um, as far as um, the fiscal agent and CPIT admin knowledge base can be found here under the administrator tab. So uh, you hover over administrator, you can click either fiscal agent or CPIT admin. So um, we'll go to our fiscal agent information first. Um, of course, um, some of you have probably already seen this, um, but a new guide has been up uploaded uh, with the uh, specific responsibilities of the fiscal agent. And uh, the information um, that I was um, referring to is uh, here. So um, if you use this guide, again, um, the timeline is there. Um, according to the OCTE June, your enrollment report submissions is between June 15th, and but this is for next year. Just keep that in mind. This is for uh, next year's reporting. but. For this year's, it's due uh, at the end of June. Okay, so um, that information is there. All of the new information for 22-23 is in the guide here. It's been updated. Um, I want to get down to uh, June uh, just to kind of highlight some of the responsibilities really fast. Um, so again, as I stated, you should perform a final review of enrollment data and submit the final information for FA approval in late June. Okay, so it tells you how to do that. Um, and we will uh, demo this screen in just a moment. I'll show you where to find it. Um, it's stated that the final enrollment report must be submitted to OCT no, no later than June 22nd. So there's the date there. Okay, so keep that in mind, fiscal agents. 
Um, let's see. Uh, I also have, uh, where is it here? If you're um, still needing to re review information, there's uh, enrollment uh, reports that might be useful to you. Uh, so that information is there and it shows you um, how to uh, get there. So this is the new uh, fiscal agent guide. So take a look at that if you um, still have any questions uh, regarding um, some of the process or information that's due, that one has been updated. Okay, uh, we'll look into getting that up as well. Um, so we'll check and see uh, what information happened there. Um, but yeah, we'll look at, we'll talk to production here to see about the 2021 2022 guide. Um, so we'll make note of that. Uh, but just keep in mind the information is due to the end of June here. So then if you're um, a CPIT admin, um, you would go back under the administrator tab and select CPIT admin. And the responsibility of the CPIT is there as well. So the information is still the same as other guides were, it's just updated with the new screen information and uh, the CPIT options information is in here. Okay, so again, uh, there was an email that was sent out a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is the new updated uh, CPIT options because we have some new CPIT option features. So that information is there. Okay, so um, you can take a look at that uh, because again, that information is due today. Um, I'll go over and demonstrate the CPIT option screen, but um, the pages are there just in case you need them. And then uh, the tasks for May and June as well. Um, of course, we're past May, but June information, just like for the fiscal agent, is also updated in this guide. And this can be found on our knowledge base. And um, OK. So um, <clears throat> as I stated, the PowerPoints for this um, uh, training is also available under the training pr uh, presentation. And then the new CPIT options guide is there, OK? So all of that information can be there. I'm sorry, can be found on our knowledge base. Uh, so that's support.cetus.com, just in case you need that for further reference. Now I'm going to demonstrate um, in just a moment, your screen uh, should see, let's see here. You should see the um, test seat of site uh, for um, our train, okay, the train.cetus.com, um, so that we can demonstrate uh, how we would go in and do um, that information. Okay, so if you log in with your my login credentials, you can uh, follow along with this information. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate. I've uh, showed you the knowledge base. Um, we're going to demonstrate how the enrollment process would work. Again, that's due uh, towards the end of June. So if I was a building reporter, um, I would go under the data entry tab. And uh, as we stated in other trainings, we would go down to enrollment completion.
And then we would select um, <clears throat> the year, of course, we're gonna do this for um, 21, 22. And then we would um, run the validation. So again, I'm, um, I'm the building reporter. I'm going to submit my information, but I need to run my validation. So I'm going to run the validation. <clears throat> if we scroll down, <clears throat> you can do this today. Um, yes, that one, two, three, four is for the train site. You're absolutely right. Please use your login your my login information and your password. Um, today, you can do this today um, if you like. The information is due by the end of June. That June 22nd date is when you need to uh, turn submit that information. However, um, CETIS options is due today. Um, so if you're the CPIT and you need to select your uh, programs for funding, the CPIT options is due today specifically. And I'll uh, demonstrate that in just a moment. Okay, so um, as I was stating here, um, the validation passes. So that particular building can be passed on. Uh, just keep in mind, um, Just keep in mind that warnings uh, do not prevent you from um, completing the building and turning it in, um, but that may cause problems uh, further down the line. So don't specifically ignore warning just because it, the validation passes, um, just keep that in mind. Um, but the validation passes with the warning. Um, the specific warning in this one is the, cor the course is no longer reported. So for this test site, I, uh, basically deleted a course and that information is still there. <clears throat> so, um, excuse me. So with that information um, being there, it's uh, giving me a warning error. But since that validation passes, we would then hit complete, okay? And as you see hitting complete, there is now an X. This is again, what you would be doing the, um, for the, inf the, the uh, submission that's due the end of June. But now the building reporter has an X under that particular building, which means I can no longer uh, go in and change anything. That's locked, okay? So um, <clears throat> once that has been locked, it's been uh, transferred to uh, the fiscal if we're following our process, okay? And we get the success uh, message down here for um, from CETIS, okay? So that information has been, so I'm done if my only role is a building um, reporter, okay? So um, at this point, we're gonna move into our fiscal agent role. We're gonna go to our admin tab. And as you see, for training purposes only, all of the permissions have been open for both the fiscal agent and the CPIT admin so that I can demonstrate this information here, okay? So um, I would go under fiscal agent monitoring, okay? That's what this is. And then I would uh, click the enrollment collection submission. And again, all of this information can be found in the guide uh, and the guide is available on the knowledge base as I showed earlier. So I'm gonna select my year. You can view previous years, but this is, we're gonna go for this year. And as you can see, that building that I the, that my building reporter uh, submitted is now um, available for me to either view issues. So I can, I'm sorry, I can click view issues. And the, the information that came up comes up here. If there was information here that I wanted to change or needed to change, I can then review that information by clicking view issues and then send it back to the building reporter to make uh, corrections. And then you can do that by clicking the send back button here. If everything is okay and you want to move the process along, um, you can then hit the submit button. Okay, so again, these here are reports that we can use to verify the information. 
Um, this is the report uh, of the uh, program information. And then this is the report that has uh, both the student information and program information. So it's a bigger uh, report, but both of those can be exported to Excel uh, to review and verify information. Um, we haven't gotten the information for Compe at this point. Uh, that information is still being worked on, um, and we will notify as soon as that information is available. <clears throat> to hit the submit button because um, I can uh, submit the information. I've done my review. So this is as the fiscal agent um, I'm submitting to the CPIT. And as you uh, see, just as it was in the building reporter, uh, the information is now locked with the X there. You can see the X here and it's locked. So I can no longer make changes to that at this time because I've submitted it on. Now, um, let's see here. Um, as I stated earlier, if you're acting in more than one role, uh, you would have to complete all of these screens to do so. There's no screen that can combine all of the processes together. You would have to act as the fiscal agent, as the building reporter, and as the CPIT. So now that we sent that information on to the CPIT, um, I would then go under admin again. I would click that information. And then under the CPIT admin, I can then uh, click the enrollment collection review. Because now we're going to review and um, We're gonna select the year. And as you can see, as the CPIT, I have the information here, okay? So we have the X's for this particular building. I can send it back or I can review it, okay? I can view issues just like the other screen with the fiscal agent. Um, I can uh, export the reports if I need to verify, um, but the information is there. Okay, so again, clicking the view issues opens the uh, box down at the bottom that tells me what the warnings are um, and that I have one issue. So if you had several, again, you can send that information back if needed. But we're going to go ahead and review. And that was um, my submission as a CPID. So now that building is locked and that is now over to OCTE. If I need to make any changes, I can do that, but I need to contact OCTE, okay? Um, as long as it's open, the due dates haven't been uh, closed, okay? So you wanna keep that in mind. As long as the submission timeline is open, I can contact OCTE to make adjustments they would have to unlock those uh, capabilities. So that's the process uh, that all, all, both the building reporter, the fiscal agent, and the CPIT administrator would conduct uh, to uh, submit their information um, for enrollment, again, due uh, June 22nd. Um, the reports that I was talking about earlier just for further verification is under the reports tab, and then you click building reports. Okay, do June 23rd. Okay, so do June 23rd, not to 22nd. So just keep that in mind uh, that your information is due. 
uh, towards the end of June. And you could prepare uh, your information. So this is the report screen. Um, and then, um, as I stated, those reports are here, the program enrollment history report, the program counts, you can select that and review the information um, there. The, um, I think that's also, let's see here. So you can review the reports there. And that's the information uh, that you would need to turn in those reports June 23rd. Okay, so... Um, So uh, now we're going to test, let's see here, we're going to show um, the CPIT admin, CPIT options information. So we're going to, um, under the admin tab, you go to CPIT options. And this is the information that's due today. So um, as you can see, um, the screens are different if you've done this before. Uh, you're now able to, uh, you can sort if you want to put in your specific building information, uh, you can do that. Um, you don't have to go through uh, your whole list. You can kind of type in these uh, spaces um, and uh, search for inf uh, different programs if needed. Um, as you can see here, um, the date. If I uh, was to go in and change information, the information is then updated to the date I did that. So it says, yes, it's saved, and then the date. The, again, this is a training site, so it has uh, um, training dates in there uh, just for uh, demonstration purposes. But if I was to... Um, click it and uh, save the information, then um, that information would update. Um, as we stated, uh, your CPIT options, uh, if you want to sort by selecting all of your programs or only selecting the non-60%, um, you can do that uh, by clicking these buttons. You can unselect all if you need to. Um, and then you can also export this information to an Excel worksheet if needed. And I'm, uh, if you uh, scroll down to the bottom of your screen, I'm not sure why my uh, test site is uh, not showing, but the save buttons is underneath where this would be. You can save the information. Um, for some reason, the screen that I'm in in test is not allowing me to show the save button, but it is here on the screen. So this is what you would do today. Um, again, if you want to view uh, specifically, if you're uh, needing to select your, um, programs, uh, the CPIT options uh, document is here. Um, 
So the updated CPIT op C excuse me, CPIT options uh, information is here and it gives a breakdown if you want to uh, view how much or uh, how it's broken up as far as the uh, CPIT share dollars. Um, and then there's explanation of all of the uh, buttons and screens here. And that's again on the knowledge base. Okay, so you can't see the save button in CPIT options. Okay, thanks for letting me know that. I'm going to get on that right now. Um, I'm not sure why that's happening. I thought it was just my test site, but you're actually in there. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna have to report that. Okay, thanks so much for letting me know that. We're gonna um, report that. Um, let's see here and see if it happens if I change windows. Okay, now uh, let's see. If I move it to a bigger, I have a bigger monitor, the save button does come up. So I can't see it if I move it to a, a, a bigger monitor, it is there. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, great. Yeah, it did pop up for me when I used it to that other monitor. So yeah, maybe that might be um, might help later. Okay, so um, again, this is what's due um, today. Uh, you want to make sure that you get that information in. Um, and um, I showed you all of the information on the uh, knowledge base. Again, this is the new CPID options uh, guide. Um, so uh, Take a look at this if you still need to uh, make those selections. Uh, this was updated, so uh, that information is there uh, for you to review. And um, once I send that information on, if, if I press save, once I do my selections, um, I can press save, and then that information is sent uh, to OCTE. Again, if I need to make changes, I can do that, but I need to contact OCTE to make those changes if I need to uh, change something af after it's submitted. Because once you um, save, um, that information is locked. So you need to contact OCTE directly to unlock, and you can do that as long as it's within the time frame of submission. So keep that in mind. Okay, so um, once you, uh, right here, uh, step five, once you're ready to submit your final selections to OCTE, click the submit button to submit all your records to OCTE. So you save, you could save, and then uh, if you wanna review it, uh, this would probably be, so saving, the saving option would probably be useful if you were doing this um, maybe a couple weeks or even, you know, a little while ago, you can save it and come back and work on it. Um, but if you're at this point, we're submitting. So yeah, you could just go ahead and submit. So yeah, you could just uh, submit it. So that's both the save and submit. And then the export is if you want to uh, look at it offline as an Excel document. So <clears throat> yep, hit the submit button and it would submit to OCTE. And then again, if I want to make changes, I can, but I have to contact OCTE to do so.
Okay, so again, this is just, uh, we wanted to highlight in today's training uh, the uh, information that was due uh, specifically for uh, the enrollments and CEPA options uh, because that's the time frame that we're in. Um, go back to my PowerPoint slides here. Um, again, um, utilize the reports as well as the knowledge base. Uh, I do apologize about the date uh, confusion, whether it's uh, due 2223 or uh, 2122. Um, I do apologize about that. I will look into getting that information um, back up if possible on the uh, knowledge base, the old manuals. But keep in mind, the old manuals do have the old information in it. We've made a lot of um, changes uh, since then. So uh, that information is not all up to date uh, with the old manuals. But uh, yes, those submission dates uh, going forward, uh, you can utilize um, the CETUS homepage also has submission dates on it if you want to review uh, your submission dates. Um, and then um, it would uh, jump over by the fall, it would be the 22-23. So um, this is just for this last little uh, section that that information is different. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, and yes, if, if you do um, have trouble with the uh, send button going forward, you can contact the CETUS help desk. Um, but it looks like if you move your screen uh, to a larger screen or change your screen settings, uh, it is there. So uh, hopefully that will work out uh, going forward. Um, so if anyone has any other uh, questions regarding um, responsibilities for uh, both the fiscal agent and CPIT, uh, I can answer those. Uh, but we have um, covered all of the information that we had uh, for today. Again, um, if you have any technical issues, uh, the help desk is available. So please uh, contact the help desk and uh, the information is on the screen uh, to contact the help desk. If you have questions about policy uh, regarding uh, policy issues, uh, we direct those to OCTE and that information is on the screen as well. That's Joan Church. Her email and uh, phone number is there. Again, um, utilize uh, the information in the guide uh, for uh, directions on how to complete. All of that information has been updated and is on the knowledge base. Okay. <clears throat> So we thank you all for joining. Uh, this was a, uh, again, a quick review, uh, update information of, of the new features that we have. Um, so just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, again, these PowerPoint slides can be found on the knowledge base as well as this training video will be uploaded uh, later uh, if you need to review and come back. Um, we ask that you, at, at the end of this training, uh, there is going to be a screen that pops up that is our CDIS training evaluation. We ask that everyone please fill that out. Your uh, responses are very important. They help to guide future training. So we ask that everyone please fill that out. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, so we thank you all for joining, but this concludes our um, training session uh, for the day. So uh, I will stay on if there's any other questions that uh, you would like to address, but at this time we are done. <clears throat>
Okay, we're going to go ahead and close the meeting and uh, thank you all for attending and uh, again have a great rest of your day.